39.88 on the horsepower and 51.86 on the foot pounds. What when did when did you when did this happen? I don't know. It doesn't count though. It's not the right dyno. You're pretty open on sharing. You know what's going to be going on. What what size nitrous jets did you? Make? What are nitrous jets? What are you talking about? Oh, so it's just straight. And we're going to go one more good attempt and then we're going to hang it up with the truck. But it's not going to be professionally competing anymore. Smoke tires, not drugs, kids. <laughs> there you go. The best takeaway from being in diesel performance. Yeah. Quit while you're ahead. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Is this the part where I have to watch what I say? Yep. Mm. Oh, you got a couple people joined already. You know I'm not very good at watching what got I say, one right? Person. Yeah. Generally, you have to edit out half of what I say, you know that, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know. I watch your videos and then it's like, it oh, was, and it changes. <laughs> and it I'm cuts like, out. That was a good joke. It was, it was, but I also can't always, I don't know how exactly it works, but typically you can't monetize. And I also kind of pride myself on trying to keep everything pretty family friendly. So like somebody, because I have a lot of, I feel like younger on kids. I feel like watch. you're just justifying turning me on. I mean, most of the time people know what you say though. That's true. It's like it's just just the word, and they can see your mouth. So it's yeah. just like just the yeah. kids that don't just get the kids. it. Welcome back to LM Diesel. LM Diesel here. We got Chris Patterson here, and we are going to have ourselves a smoke. He's got a cigar. I got the pipe, and uh, we're just going to talk about some UCC prep. Um, just plans in the future with his shop, uh, plans in the future with my truck and the channel and, and all that stuff. So, oh hey, I didn't see you there. Did you know 82% of y'all are not subscribed? So do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's get back to the video. So, we're gonna talk about UCC. Mm -hmm. What's that? That's a good question. UCC is what I would call the diesel mecca. Like it is where all the diesel heads throughout the United States all come together and it's a big showdown of the biggest shops and the baddest trucks and typically some of the best show trucks as well. So people bring a lot of different stuff, stuff to sled pull, stuff to drag race, straight lifted trucks with massive frame off suspension lifts. It's a big deal. It's one of those things where it's like if you're in the community um, and you haven't been to UCC, like you need to go to UCC. If you're a Gotta Harley go. guy, it's like going to Sturgis. It's you know definitely I mean? worth it. It's a once in a lifetime thing, in my opinion. And if you have the opportunity to go to UCC and spectate and see all this, do it. It's worth it. It is mm -hmm. completely overwhelming. Tons of shopping, tons of eye candy, whatever you want, they got it. Uh, there's there's the ODSS <laughs> going at the same time. Who's calling it? And they got a burn box this year. Then obviously the ultimate call out challenge portion, mm -hmm. the spectator dyno. Sorry, I was getting a call. You were getting a phone call? Yeah, that's what that sound was. Who would call you? Don't they know you're up to something better? Mm hmm. Did you go to UCC last year? Yeah. I filmed. Got a lot of footage of your truck there. I just wanted to hear you say it. I did go to UCC last year, and yeah. I will be going this year as well. So it is an awesome, awesome event. So, but the thing that makes UCC unique as opposed to other events is that it is a three part event. First day is drag racing, uh, which is eighth mile, right? Eighth mile. Yep. Eighth mile drag racing. And then the second day is dyno. And then yep. the last day is sled pull. Yep. And did they just change the rules? Do you have to use the same truck? Yep, they changed the rules again. Mm -hmm. It's kind of back to closer to where it was one truck all three segments. Um, they changed kind of some of the point system, but it really mm -hmm. doesn't matter to the spectators. Right. But uh, the end goal is is back to one truck for drag racing, dynoing, and sled pulling. One driver the whole time. No truck changes, no driver changes. Kind of the traditional way of competition. Last year they had the two truck rule where you could hire in someone to sled or drag race or, you know, I didn't really pay attention to much of that because I already knew what I was going with. So mm -hmm. we're really, really, really looking forward to this year. We're, we're bringing a lot. Um, we didn't, we didn't change the recipe too much. We, we already know how the cake tastes. And so if we start changing the ingredients, it's going to taste a little bit different. And we're going to, we're going to bring what we had plus a little bit. We found some issues we had last year. We corrected them. 
And so we're coming back to kind of uh, show what, what it's like when the truck's on 100%. All right, y'all been asking, Levi, when are you gonna drop a merch line? Well, today is the day I have partnered with LMP Gear and we have dropped a merch line. There's hats, t-shirts, stickers, hoodies, anything you want. So go check out the link in the description to go pick you up some merch. Also, anything you buy gets you entered in to win their current giveaway, a sweet second gen dually. So what are you waiting for? Go copy some good stuff and let's get back to the video. Yeah, so that could even bring us into the first topic of what it was like communicating, or not communicating, uh, competing last year. Well, communication was a thing too. That was <laughs> lots of communication as well, right? <laughs> competing. Competing, yeah. Competing is stressful, intense, chaotic, uh, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, <laughs> mistakes, lessons, it's all, it's all there. Yeah. Um, it is extremely fun. And the funny thing is you never really race anybody. <laughs> yeah. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. yeah. It's, okay. it's yeah, literally yeah. like personal best attempts every time it's all yeah it's yeah that makes it's sense. not like rounds of drag racing mm -hmm. where you have to qualify and then you have a ladder and then you got round one round two round three semifinals finals whatever right it's you want the right lane or left lane you go when they call you up and then you pick your lane and you run your personal best on a time trial right reaction time doesn't matter well that's a whole different game yeah yeah once you introduce a driver beside you, things change. Absolutely. So UCC is a little bit different like that. You never have the driver beside you. So you dyno by yourself. You got 30 minutes to do whatever whatever you want. Right. You sled by yourself. You get one pull and then you get a reset if you don't make it past 75 feet. And then drag racing, you get unlimited attempts during the uh, opportunities to go down the track. And you're all by yourself. So you can stage, the reaction time doesn't matter. You can stage however you want. You can take, you know, like probably 30 seconds or a minute to spool up all those chargers or whatever the heck you're doing. <laughs> so you, you can take your time and that's that's a little bit different or that's a lot different than drag racing. Right. But I also so, imagine that it makes it more, you know, makes it more, uh, there's a lot more strategy involved with it too because, you know, with drag racing, I would imagine that sometimes you're like, hey, I just need to beat this guy to continue forward. Yeah. But if every pass is like, hey, I'm trying to push the limit, like go faster and faster, you're really pushing your equipment as hard as you can, like every time. Yeah. Which then makes it even more unique because then cause <laughs> it also has to last for three days. Yeah. Yeah. Or you bring three of everything or more like a lot of these guys do. Oh, sorry. I was guilty. I brought I, much of everything because oh, we needed it. There are three oh, blocks. Those? Though. Yeah. Oh, those, yeah. Those, Don't worry those. about that. It's the transmissions. <laughs> yeah, the trannies. The transmissions. We got yeah. plenty of those. I think we fixed a lot of that, though. With the tranny? Yeah. You know, we went to All Truck Challenge 2022 in Delaware. Yeah. And one transmission for the whole event. It was really good. Dude, never happened in my life. Yeah. I mean, I, I blew up my motor. <laughs> I did it. It didn't blow up. I blew it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, but that was that was we'll a have, bonehead we'll, move. We'll have to talk we'll get to about, that. We'll have to get to that as but, well. But yeah, multiple, multiple, multiple parts, lots and lots and lots of parts. I mean, you're talking showing up to an event with three motors, three trains, three transfer cases, a dozen turbos, a set of pumps, a set of sticks, <laughs> a couple converters, a drive shaft, a couple ring and pinion sets. Like what Everything. else? Everything. A dozen nitrous bottles. Yeah. Like it, it's insane. I mean, and then it's of course, insane if you're much. sled pulling, right? Then you're. Some if. guys will do if you are yeah. right. You are sled pulling. We show up. We got twenty tires and wheels. Right. We literally have like four sets of tires and wheels. Four or five. I don't, I don't forget. It's a lot. It's right. more than what you can fit in one bed of a truck. Right. It's about fifteen feet on a gooseneck trailer. <laughs> it's crazy. They just stack up like a pyramid. Just all those tires, and Big then some guys even tires. they'll change out their whole suspension setup for UCC. For each, like, maybe not for each event, but, like, yeah. definitely between drag racing yep. and the sled pull. Yep. So, UCC, as we've been talking about here, this is the big event. And this is an especially big event for Chris this year because... You want to share or should I? I don't know. What is it? You're scaring me. 
Uh, not really. I'm not scared. <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Oh, uh, dude. Well, it, it's an especially big event for Chris because it'll be his second time coming. So dial, mm -hmm. everything will be more dialed in, which is huge. Yeah. But also, this will be one of the last big events mm -hmm. that you compete in. Yep, this is probably going to be it. You know, uh, me and Green, en Green Envy, we've been through a lot of stuff. We've been through hundreds of thousands of dollars each year. And I have now achieved all the goals I care to achieve with this truck. So I'm to the point now where I think it's time to, to do it one more, good, one more good round. We have 100% of everything now. And we're going to go one more good attempt. And then we're going to hang it up with the truck. It's still going to make big power. It's still going to be green, still going to drive around, but it's not going to be professionally competing anymore. Mm. This is something where I want my truck back. I want my heated seats back in it. <laughs> uh, race week is a blast. Air conditioner, heater, cruise control. Like I'm kind of thinking street oriented. Like what yeah. if we went to dinner tonight in it? Exactly. Could you think of anything we could do in that truck in this town? <laughs> it would be fun. It would be fun. And it's, it's, Building the ultimate street setup is a lot of guys' dreams, you know, because yep. it's like yep. the fun part about the ultimate street setup is that you get to drive it every day and mm -hmm. you get to enjoy it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I have definitely pushed to do that with my truck. While there's definitely some things I could change, it's pretty ultimate streets setup, in my opinion, and could go even further. It basically came off the Mega Cab. So basically. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Ultimate yeah, I mean, street setup. It's the old compound kit. And then your 100 percent, 100%, 100%, 100% flux injectors, yeah. a couple good pumps. I mean, she rips. She all you rips. Need now is a full manual and a built motor, and you know, <laughs> yeah. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> all you need is this extra long list, it's and just, then it'll really rip. <laughs> hey, you got a job, right? I do have a job, and you get paid. I do get paid. Those are two wonderful things. <laughs> and they, uh, and, and they, you know, it goes to fun stuff. Like it does go parts. to fun stuff. So yeah, but uh, back to UCC. So. Since this is going to be your final event, I know you had shared with me a little bit offline that you're pretty open on sharing, you know, what's going to be going on, uh, what's going on under the engine, what's going on in the motor, you know, what, you know, everything's out now, all the secrets. Yeah, it turns out. out you take a part of the engine on camera and people are interested and they still say that yeah. you can't do what you did even though you took it apart on camera, but it uh, is Danny it Diesel is. video, if y'all ever get a chance yeah, to check watch it out. That. Yeah, it's he really took good. the whole thing apart by the way just so we're all clear here 34 100 horsepower was mm -hmm. it 34 was it like it was like 3400 you want the dyno graph yes let's okay. look at the dyno graph should we get the dyno graph? let me get my folder of dinos there we go all the dinos he's done so somebody asked so the only way to be competitive in ucc is 2500 horsepower and above i don't know because you have to finish right you gotta finish that's hard do you need that? You don't need that much horsepower. You definitely don't need that much horsepower. You for do. Drag you want to win the dyno. Not for the dyno, but for yeah. drag racing and sled pulling. Do you need that much for sled pulling? It'd be nice to use it. You, uh, you, you definitely need to make a lot of power. But if you were consistent and you placed very well, if you got top three in every segment, you stand a good chance. That is true. You know, I don't even know where this stupid thing is. I got all these other ones. Yeah. I have one here that you can, you can dissect this if you want. Okay. We won't dive too much into it, but you can. Okay, so this, so guys, I'm looking at this dyno sheet here. We'll hold it up for a second, and it shows 39.88 on the horsepower and 51.86 on the foot pounds, which is crazy. What's up? Wait a minute. What's when did when did you when did this happen? I don't know. It doesn't count though. It's not the right dyno. On whose dyno was this? That is private party information, but it doesn't count. It's not the right dyno. I mean, it says pure evolution or pure elevation sheet. And I don't think it says the name of the dyno. It's not the super flow though, so, you know. Um, Dude, I don't even know where this freaking 3,400 horsepower dyno one is. I've got a lot of 25s, 25s, 26s, 28s. Wait, wait, I don't even know where when this When did this happen? Is. is this day correct? No way. But it's not the super flow. It's not the super flow. So that brings up some more unique uh, controversy is that you're bringing everybody in from all over the country, right? Which means that there are varying opinions on what is actually legit, yep. right? Yep. 
you know, so there's some guys that say, oh, well, you know, it's got to be this dyno. And some guys that say it's got to be that dyno. And it's got to be maybe at this eleva elevation. And you can't use this or you can use that. Or there's a long list of do's and don'ts. But the 3,400 horsepower, the reason why that was such a big deal was because it was on the Superflow. Yeah. And that Superflow dyno is kind of the dyno that everyone respects. It's the standard. It's the standard, if it's, you will. It's the, the equalizer. It's like the, the you have to do it on that. If you don't do it on that, then it just, it really doesn't even count. And you can't even consider anything that happens on any other dyno, apparently. But then, it, couldn't you say the same thing about a drag strip? I mean, different elevations, different regions, different track prep, you know, different like, track. Yeah, I yeah. mean, different. Could you say the same thing there, too? I mean, I feel like no matter where you compete, there's going to be differences. It's yeah. really a matter of do you know your vehicle and can you come up and can you perform to the best of your ability? Yeah, it kind of goes back to that. Like, you have to finish it and you have to balance it. And you at UCC, you're going out there and ever pass down the track is supposed to be your best pass. Right. But at the same time, if you reach for the stars and you fall short, you don't <laughs> ever get the reward. So you have yeah. to go out there and you have to get something that might be a little bit safer. Right, like right. If you get no score or whatever you're trying to run, if something happens, like you need a backup plan. If you if you shatter the transmission because you went up there with it turned to the max on the first hit, right? Well, then you don't have, you don't get a score at all. Whatever you're going to coast across is what you're going to get, right? So there's a strategy that comes into all these things. So um, we're talking about the basically the same motor setup mm -hmm. from last year. For y'all mm -hmm. that don't know, that is a Hamilton Competition block, yep, filled, yep, DNJ rod, yep, stock six seven uh, Cummins piston, yep. People don't believe it, but it's true. And that is two Exergy 14 mil pumps, yep. two fast 220? 290s, 290s yep. on the back, yep. obviously six, seven, uh, flux 400%, uh, 450, 450 yeah. Yeah. comp hybrids, I think they're 450s. They 450s? They might be 408s. I think they're 450s. All of the nitrous, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Good amount of nitrous express involved. And then an S480 on the manifold and a 115. That's one of the setups, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, let yeah, me know VS. like what the, I've, I've edited some videos, I've like memorized it all. So let me know what, what are gonna be some different things that you're bringing this year? So last year you had triples. What is- The biggest thing I'm bringing that's different is 155 cubic millimeters at wide open throttle. Okay. Well, okay. So last yeah, break year, that down. Break that down. Yeah. Whenever you, whenever you tune and you, you have an ECM, you can ask for a certain amount of fuel. And in the the tuning world, 155 cubic millimeters of fuel demand is wide open throttle. Mm. And uh, last year we had 70 cubic millimeters of fuel demand. That's not the volume of fuel from the injectors. That's in the ECM side, mm. the amount of fuel that you're asking for. Yeah. So. It was like way low. Which, and if you go and watch either my UCC video or even one of the Instagram reels where I show you Dino, that was when he, when you did the six passes back mm -hmm. to back to back. Cause yep. it was kind of like, hey man, like this thing's it not ain't right. right. It ain't it right, ain't right? right? Yeah. And so you ended up making like 25 or 2600 horsepower. Yeah. And, and it was so like, what? Um, but yeah. ultimately it ended up being 70% throttle. That was yep. like the yep. ultimate issue. Yep. When it came down to it, it was around 72% of the fuel we had. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was 125 cubic millimeters. I know that 155 is wide open. And I, I kind of want to say that the data log said 125 was the actual fuel demand that we got. Uh, and what happened was when you run an electronic transfer case or you run like a um, full manual valve body and you lose your governor pressure transducer and solenoid, and you have an automatic file in your ECM, you go into a limit. There is, mm. I'm not a tuner, so I don't know. So don't quote me on all this crap, but there is a <laughs> limiter somewhere in there that pulls your fuel back. Mm. And I flashed in the automatic file because I have an electronic transfer case and I have to shift to forward low to go sled pulling. But we sled pulled like three weeks before we came to UCC. And I flashed in the auto file, shifted to four wheel low, and then I forgot to flash in the full manual file that gives uh, you the full power. And then we did our sled pull. 
we popped an intercooler, we learned some things, we learned some chassis changes and sled pulling, and we didn't even really look at the logs. And we basically came home, swapped drag racing, loaded up, went to UCC, yeah. made some runs, had some training problems, made some runs, got some clean passes, settled for it, threw on the triples, went to <laughs> dyno, did some pulls and had to settle for that. And then threw on the sled, did one pass and had to settle for that, came home, looked at all the data logs, saw that the fuel demand was 125. <laughs> and then we understood why we were down on power and why we were slower than what we intended. Oh. So the biggest change for UCC is the correct tune in the ECM. Right. It's a mistake that is, it cost a lot and it really hurt, mm. but it's also free. Yeah. Like all you got to do is flash the it's, freaking right tune in the truck. How right. hard is that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, we, cor we corrected that. And then we went to race week and had more training problems. And then we went to Salt Lake City, no, yes, yeah, Salt Lake City right. at the edge of him. Mm -hmm. And and that's where we did the 3401. That's where you laid it down. Yeah. So last year you had triples. Uh -huh. We're doing compounds mm -hmm. this year. I don't you think you'll ever see triples on that truck again. The triples look really cool. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like a novelty thing, maybe a little bit. It's like they make power but they don't really... The best way to describe a triple setup is like a light switch. It's either on or off. Yeah. And then sometimes when you're trying to hook to a roller or a racetrack or whatever, and your power comes on so quick, you don't get a chance to bite. Mm. Or sometimes it comes on so quick with boost and RPM that the nitrous comes on just as quick because it's all related. Right. And then you, you go from 20 pounds to 140 pounds like it's, very, very, very quick. So yeah. quick you can't really catch it. And then you just, you can't just smack it like that. Right. A big pair of compounds pulls the power out across RPM a little bit softer and a little bit wider. Mm. So your your opportunity to make horsepower is wider. That makes sense. You get more of a run and start and you get more of a load on the chargers to bring them all the way up to boost. It, it keeps the tire planted a little bit better. It gives the time for the nitrous to all overlap and come on smooth and not too violent. Mm -hmm. So the triple thing, it ain't for me. No, not anymore. Which is funny because like back in the day, that was kind of like what you're known for was the triples. But. I did. I got a lot of attention when I cut big freaking holes in the hood and stuck two red chargers out of a white truck. <laughs> but it did the tick. It, it, did, did, the, it, it did the trick. It, it did it the work. The it did it. Yeah. It got a lot of attention and it worked good. That worked real good. So going with compounds this year, which I think was yep. definitely a good idea. Yeah. It's like sometimes you... Just you can't just keep adding more of something good. Something that does sometimes that doesn't work. Wait, right? that if it's if a little bit is better, shouldn't you do more? I mean to a point. Oh. It's yeah. all about the ratios, right? You know? So, so if if four hundred percent injectors work, you need five hundreds or six hundreds. You need or seven nitrous. Eight hundreds? Just I don't think you need to. No, 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 you don't need to do that at all. But lots and lots and lots of nitrous though. Four bottles. How much did you use in that one? I didn't even weigh it, but there were four bottles and they all have Dash 8 hoses. What I mean, it? it takes a couple pounds to open the bottle and fill the lines up to right, the solenoids. Right, right, right. So you can watch the pressure drop 200 opening the valve, filling up a half inch hose from the bed of the truck to the engine. Right. Times that's, four. That's cool. You can, in the dyno runs, you can hear the nitrous leaving the bottle over the sound of the turbos. <laughs> You well, you remember when you dry fired it? Um, oh yeah, when I was yeah, here, yeah. and it shot, it spun all three turbos, and just mm -hmm. it was crazy. But lots and lots and lots of nitrous. So, and the reason for that, um, and you could probably dive into this more. The reason why, because I feel like there's a lot of guys out there like I want to make this big power like naturally aspirated or not naturally aspirated, but I want to make fuel it just only clean, fuel only. You know, what's that's to do the on fuel? That's the that's the question. And really, when I think when it comes to high level competition, you want nitrous big time, not only for the more power, but we're talking about we're getting more air in the cylinders. Basically, we're getting a, a cleaner reaction in the cylinders, yep. which then I believe also leads to cooler uh, temperatures within the engine as well. So mm -hmm. your EGTs aren't like through the roof trying to get it to light. But there's a lot to that. There's a lot, you know, there's and there's a, a there's a balance of course, but like the fact that you can take, cause I've seen guys that are like, yeah, man, I got like 600% overs, you know, whatever. And they go and smack and they do like 15 or 1600 horsepower. And it's just black the whole it's time. It's just black the whole time. And then you got you with like 450s and 
3,400 horsepower. And like, it's like, how'd you do that? Nitrous. And it's like, well, is that a good idea? It's like, yeah, like the motor freaking lives. Someone says, I think Chris needs to do 36 plus horsepower. 3,600 plus. I think that's obtainable. I think I so. I don't think that's enough. So, who knows, man? The weather might be uh, just right. Yeah. It, it, there's so many stars have to align for this crap. A lot of people don't get it or understand true. it. It has to be perfect. It's perfect. I mean, we're talking like not just like we're coming dyno <laughs> operator, weather, you. Like, and really, it's all the about tune. the tune, you know. <laughs> the tire choice. The tire choice, all, all of that it. stuff. All of it. That makes a, a unique question. Um, so, are you just going to stick with the same tires for dynoing this year? It worked really good in Salt Lake. Yeah. Four Nitto Triple Fives on a set of fuel wheels in the back. <laughs> 412 pounds of rotational weight on the axle. It worked really good. I mean, if, if, if it worked well there, why won't it work again in June? Yeah. Same dyno, same dyno, same operator, True. same truck, same driver, well, same getting, gear set, like same tire choice. You're getting good traction, obviously, from the four tires. But I almost wonder with the more mass, like if you're loading the chargers more with that as I well. I think I think there's a lot of things that comes into play with the tire choice on a dyno. You know, there's something to be said about already having rotational weight and inertia. That roller weighs like 8,000 pounds or something like that. Oh, it's wow. already really heavy. That's crazy. And it has the, the eddy brake, the load behind it. Mm -hmm. But having four tires touch it compared to having two tires touch it, well then that's twice as good, right? You said earlier if a little bit's good, more is better. More is better. But you have to buy this traction, and you're paying for it with horsepower. Well, I didn't spin a tire, so I like that idea. Versus, I did spin tires when I had the inside duels. Yeah. Now, could I take a pair, like a pair of Bogarts with yeah. bead locks, and put an ETR on it, or that Pro 315 radial or some crap? Mm -hmm. I could probably do that. But I don't have a dyno, especially that dyno. Right. And I haven't tested that, so I don't plan on testing that. So yeah, I think yeah. we're gonna be sitting on four nittos. Which is going to look so good. You may or may not have a full bed on it. Awesome. I mean, it might be in street trim. Dude, straight street trim shows up with a dually and like wins. That would be so fantastic. Who knows? You know, all of us have a good shot and all of us have a good chance of blowing up too. So, uh, switching gears a little bit, we've talked a lot about UCC, we've talked about plans, we've talked about what's done with the truck. What does the future of unrivaled diesel look like here? in Weatherford, Texas. To be honest with you, the future of unrivaled diesel is profitable and rapid growth and expansion. Okay. Every time I look around, I need more. People, parts, equipment, room, everything. That's a lot of the reason why I'm stepping back on the green truck is I'm a little bit more concerned about my next five years of my life as compared to my previous five years. Mm. And I've done everything I ever wanted to do plus so much more. Absolutely. It's like, when is enough enough? Normally enough is enough when the motor blows up or the turbos explode or you just can't hook up or right, you just can't keep the gears in it for sled pulling or whatever. That's, well, it's kind of like, okay, I think, I think we have enough here that... Right. At what point is it like, all right, I'm kind of done and over. I'm ready to change my life and change my future. Right. So, future for Unrivaled Diesel is that in itself, to not really compete, but more so be a leader and a mentor and a guide and a help to all the friends and family and customers that have supported me this far. And I'm hoping to take them into the future and make their goals happen. Mm. I have a lot of friends, clients, it's all the same thing. They all want to go do X, Y, Z, and I want to help them do it. That's so that, it. that's where it's at. You're the guy. You I'm going to try to be. Well, and that also brings me to kind of an idea that I was going to run by you. Uh, and I think maybe you're, you're already working towards it anyway. But honestly, I would like to make the DFW area like kind of like more of a diesel hub if that makes sense yeah. you know what i mean it's like hey if you like say you're like some guy and you have like a truck or whatever and you're trying to go drag racing or maybe you're trying to make like a big lifted truck or whatever mm -hmm. it's like where do i go you go to dallas fort worth and that's Texas where all the best state. that's where all the best shops are that's where all that's where the community is it's like the center 
it's like that's where I, I'd love to build more of like a diesel community. Maybe even get to a point where we're putting on our own shows and own and our own meets, you know, and just trying to build kind of like organically build like a community. You know what I mean? Yeah. The unrivaled community. How about that? Well, I mean, just in general, overall, the diesel performance industry needs as much help and support as it can get. Absolutely. We need to start helping one another instead of hurting one another and chopping everybody down. So the only way I know to do these things is to take what I've learned and apply it to people that want to go do the same stupid crap I've done. <laughs> so it's like I, I learned the lessons coming up of what a motor can take and can't take and how to fix things and yeah. the engine, the transmission, transfer case, turbos, chassis, four link, whatever, right? Like right. I'm just, I'm ready to start helping others and making other people get their goals and seeing them enjoy fruits of their labors and their investments. Cause this is really expensive. This is a strain on a job, a marriage, a bank account, a business, a family. Like this lifestyle is almost like a drug addict, I feel like. It's, <laughs> yeah. There the highs are so high and the lows are so low. You just have to wonder like at what point do you need to change something and where are you gonna go if you don't change what you're doing? And do you like where it's going? Do you want more of it? And yeah. how do you how do you affect that? The, the things you have to understand is what you can and cannot change and how to, how to accept that. That is so true. Somebody asks, uh, the best takeaway from, and I assume they kind of mean like, maybe we'll, we'll just say competing and being in this industry. What would you say your, your biggest or best takeaway? The best takeaway from being in diesel performance? Yeah. Quit while you're ahead. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, no, that's not, that's a joke. The best thing I could say about this industry and in playing and in, in, in horsepower would probably be pick a goal that's reasonable and obtainable and pick who you want to help you get that goal and make sure they have the means to get you there. Mm. This is not something where you can take pieces and bits of information from everybody and come, like throw it all together in your own build. Yeah. You you have to kind of listen to a person and listen to their advice and take it for, for what it is. If you just go talk to this guy about your piston, go talk to this guy about injector, this guy about turbo and never include the tuner, like that ain't fair. Yeah. So you yeah. have to have a well-rounded package and you have to have someone that can that has the knowledge and experience to give you what you want if you can't get it yourself. There you go. Here's another great question. Uh, why green on the dually? We wrapped that truck green. I ordered, I guess you call it like a swatch book or whatever. It's a book that shows all the different shades that uh, 3M and Avery is the wrap companies they offered. Mm. So I have like 400 shades of all this crap. Took them all out in the sun, spread them out, and we picked like our top 15 or 20. Mm. And I wanted something that no one else had done. I don't like following in footsteps. Yeah. I like chopping my own road. So I wanted something that set out from the pack. But the cool part is I wanted something that the little kids and the younger, you know, the, the, the kids of the sport and the boys coming up and the girls coming up that want to be in the game. And I wanted something they would remember and like mm. stick out like, oh, did you see that green truck? Oh, the, that's the green. And yeah. that, that color green, it looked like a bass boat yeah. on wheels. <laughs> yeah. When I held that color up, it was between a red a blue and a green and a flat orange oh, and man. a chrome purple but i couldn't afford the chrome wrap it was like six grand for just the wrap material oh, deal chrome. and that green stuck out so much yeah. i was like that's it i've never seen a bright green glitter truck i think it was such a good uh that's such a good choice too i saw uh somebody comment or just post something about this earlier like you gotta remember that like when you're doing all this a lot of the people that are watching are like kids and young people yep. right yep and they're sitting there and they're they, they want to do it too and they want to see something crazy and they want to see stuff that's memorable and so you know having something that's kind of more of just an obnoxious color obnoxious makes, right yep. makes like all this huge difference. thing and it's it's bad enough that we're stupid enough to race what we're racing <laughs> quad cab long bed dual rear tire truck <laughs> Let's yeah. be for real yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we picked like the biggest freaking thing. It, it was a boat. Race. You, you race, you're racing. I mean, it a started boat. at 8,200 pounds. 
Yeah. Whenever we broke in the nines, it was 999 at 143 with triples at 7,810 pounds at 2,040 horsepower. <whistles> three kits of nitrous, flux 300, 300% overs, couple 400s that <laughs> we had patched together. We had <laughs> patched together these, these 400s. I mean, they were, there was about five different turbo manufacturers all bolted together right here. <laughs> And, uh, and the thing did work, but it was 7,800 pounds. Yeah, yeah. 2,000 horsepower to run 999. I mean, the mile per hour is good. 143 is good. Yeah. But what would happen if you put that in a 5,500 pound regular cab short bed with a pair of radials? Whew, it'd be a rocket. Yeah, it'd be totally different. So, you know, if you're going to do something really stupid, at least just get a lot of attention and look good doing it. So here's a question. Uh, I've actually been meaning to ask you about this for a while. What are your thoughts on putting an RPM limiter on the truck for you ever seen those videos where the guys get their Cummins to sound like the two Jay-Z's oh, where it's like man. Wah, 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 it sits there wah, 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 you want dude. some of that Ross burner crap on there dude but it sounds the, the limiter sounds so good you, okay even on Hold the Cummins on. it Hold sounds on. good I think it, it's not about power it's about how it sounds I think it sounds yeah it sounds sick. good sounds it sounds good. sick yeah what do you think that wrist pin bearing says uh, the wrist pin bushing at the end of the tank explain rod. when you turn off that injector and you're at 4,000 rpm and that piston's flopping up and down a million miles a second, and you take off the fuel from the top of the piston, mm. that whole piston has momentum. And so it goes up, it, I don't know, what, 2,000 feet a second, 1,500 feet a second, 800 feet, I don't know, a lot. Wow. And then there's no fire on top because you're pulling the fuel out to make it do a two-step and make it do a popping and banging. Right. That, that wrist pin and that piston go up and they slap, and that thing just sits there, bang, bang. It might only be a thou and a half clearance yeah. on that wrist pin to that bushing, but that whole assembly is very heavy. It is. So you want to put a two-step on your on your red truck? Uh, no. Okay. Not anymore. I'd okay. like it to live. Wrist pins love it so much wrist more. Wrist pins love it. But I, I've, I've been curious about that for a while. So that's, your that's, that's a good answer. We'll, we'll try it on yours. <laughs> Not mine, though. All right, man. Is that it? Should we call it? Hey, I don't care. I still got a little stick left, but this is all up to you. We'll just, for the people that are here, we'll do, I'll just do a quick recap. Um, so, we talked about UCC some, kind of talked about the setup. Basically, Chris is going to be going with a very similar setup that he did at um, Weekend on the Edge. Uh, exact same stuff. Exact we, same we setup. So, he's going to be doing UCC with that setup this year, and he is going to, this will be his last time competing at UCC, or at least at this really high level. He's taking kind of a step back from that. We talked about all the different trucks and the builds and, go and all that stuff going on. I definitely encourage y'all to check out Danny Diesel's channel because you'll definitely see some more info along all of this. There's uh, little pieces of bread dropped everywhere. There's little pieces of, yeah, that's a good way to I don't have anything to hide. I've shown everybody everything. Someone says do this more often. We should do this more often. But yeah, so y'all go check that out, and I think we're going to clock out here. So we'll see y'all. Toodles. Peace.